Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zach, and today we're going to be analyzing how the recent polls will affect the 2018 elections. So, if you guys have been looking on RCP, Kinnipiac, or any polling site, you've probably been seeing a recent spike in congressional polling across the United States and in individual Senate seats as well. This is mainly credited uh, from the release of the New York Times anonymous op-ed from a source in the White House and from the release of Bob, Wood Bob Woodward's book, uh, both things transpiring in the past few days. And in my opinion, both those, both of them, well, let's start with what they are to begin with, since most of you, since some of you probably don't know. Um, both Bob, Wood, Bob Woodward's book and the anonymous op-ed by New York Times both essentially say the same thing, and that's that there are aides in the White House who are actively working against Donald Trump um, because they believe that he is temperamental, that he is irrational, and that they don't think that he is fit to lead, and so the aides allegedly have been swiping documents off of his desk and working actively to make sure that he doesn't uh, make any irrational or decisions that can affect the country. There have been discussions in Bob Woodward's book and in the op-ed about invoking the 25th Amendment, which would cause a very complex and long um, constitutional process, which would remove, uh, which would basically just remove the president from office and install the vice president as the as the president. So, my views on it is there's either two outcomes. It's either true or it's not true. Obviously, those are the two scenarios. If it's true, then obviously this is disastrous for the president. If it can be proven, obviously it's disastrous for the president, uh, since it just shows that his own aides don't have. Um, confidence in him and that he truly is um, not fit to not fit to um, lead or at least his closest cabinet members and closest aides don't believe he is, which is disastrous for any president. Um, if it's not true, if this is just one aide speaking out um, about how they feel and that's not um, universally true and that may, may not be even true at all, that it isn't as extreme as the aide characterized or as Bob Woodward characterized it, then it's still damaging to the presidency because this sh this just shows that the president doesn't have control over his own cabinet, doesn't have control over his own um, advisors, and this just isn't th this isn't good for a president either way. Is essentially what I'm saying. It, he's either it either shows that he is truly irrational or that he does not have a firm control over his own um, aides and his own cabinet. Which, in either way, that is does not look good for him, and the polls are showing that. I'm going to get to the Senate map uh, once I analyze each poll individually, but first let's look at the generic congressional vote polling, which hopefully load. There we go. As we can see here, there's been a giant spike um, in Democratic uh, approval numbers for um, 2018 Congress. Recently, it's been the highest since it's been in months, maybe even almost a year, it looks like. Um, it's dipped down today, but I think that was mostly as a result of the jobs numbers that was released today, which um, were pretty solid. Uh, but regardless, this is um, the highest Democrats have been um, since the beginning of 2018, as you can see over here. Um, and this is very good for them. Um, the November midterms are about a month and a half away. And for this to happen so close to the midterms is very, very good for them, to say the least. Um, but we're not just looking at it here. Um, let's look at the individuals. Well, actually, let's look at Trump's approval first, um, which is even more uh, more of a spike, if you ask me, um, in terms of disapproval. You can see it, you can see definitively that um, August twentieth, I guess, is when it started, but it really started to um, solidify and become more prominent and noticeable right around when um, Bob Woodward's book and and the op-ed came out. And I'm not saying that these polls are just because of the op-ed and just because of Bob, Bob Woodward's book, but it absolutely is a huge factor. I think it's a big factor. Oh, I just, there we go. Uh, I think it's absolutely a big factor in the spike in around here especially. And I think it's going to have a larger effect um, down the road once Democrats start releasing ads about this, once Democrats start to really use this to their advantage, which they ha which they started to, but they haven't really truly um, taken advantage of yet, and I think they definitely will um, use that as one of their many playing cards as the midterms inch closer and closer and as we get into the final lap of, uh, of campaigning. But when we're looking at um, Joe Donnelly versus Mike Braun, if you guys watched my most recent Senate prediction, I commented on this plus 12 and I thought it was an outlier, and I was almost certain it was an outlier, which is why um, I didn't 
really take too much of that, which, which is why I didn't really take this into consideration. But now we have another poll coming out, which has Donnelly plus 6 over Braun. And that's not plus 12, but that's much more solid than you would expect this race to be. You would expect this race to be 50-50 um, split, or at least I would. Um, but the polls are not reflecting that at all. The polls are reflecting a very strong advantage in Donnelly's favor. Um, and this will play a, play a role in how this election will go and how I will call it in the future. Um, whether or not it will move from tilt to lean or from anything else other than tilt, um, I guess we'll see in the future because it's it really is too soon to call um, in terms of how these polls will affect or how or how reliable these polls really are. Um, I think that once I see a few more polls out that show uh, consistently in this range of plus six, plus five, give or take, then I c would probably move this race from um, tilt to to lean in uh, the Democrats column. But now we're going to look at over here um, the Florida the Florida Senate race, which is uh, pretty big. We're seeing ties. 50-50s um, ties from Kinnipiac and Gravis um, recently, and this one was taken uh, right when the story of Bob Woodward's book and uh, the op-ed by the New York Times was released, and it was a tie right down the middle, and this comes after when Scott was leading pretty consistently by plus 6, plus 3, plus 4, um, but now we're seeing that his advantage is starting to dip a bit. Um, I can't speak to fundraising, but I don't. I doubt that's changed. But poll, at, at least for polling, we're seeing that um, the Democrats are now now have a larger a larger chance for uh, uh, for winning here. Um, so now we're let's go over to Tennessee. We've had we've seen some polls come out here as well. Uh, let's just wait for it to load. Hopefully it does. As I said in the past, I've been having issues with my Wi-Fi before, and that's affected how I've been able to make videos, but here we go. Uh, Bredesen has come back with uh, plus two after Blackburn was in with plus four. Um, and this, I know this says from August, but there was another poll that said plus two that was from September. Um, it's not posted here, but I saw it on the RCP website. It was another plus two in favor of Bredesen. So Bredesen is definitely making a comeback in this state in terms of polling, at least, and that is very good for him. This is a state that Democrats need. If it, Well, they don't need it. Um, there's a number of combinations that Democrats could win in order to take the Senate, but if you ask me, this is a state that they kind of need in their column. There's very few other ways for them to take the Senate um, without Tennessee. Um, so now that I've discussed these Senate races, and there's been a number of Senate races that polls have not come out yet, so like Texas, I guarantee that this is going to have an effect on Texas. Um, I guarantee it's going to affect on Arizona, Nevada, all the close states. Um, but in terms of the Senate prediction, I'm going to characterize how it will affect it now. So to start off, I think that th I think that this definitely uh, puts Indiana in leaning Democrat. Well, not definitely, but if this um, all comes to fruition and if it all holds holds throughout these next few weeks, then Indiana would move into leaning. I think if I know there's no polls in Texas yet, but Cruz was leading by plus one in the most recent poll against um, Beto. His lead is starting to slip. And if we see that have the same effect on Texas that's having on Indiana and, and on Tennessee, then I would see this go move into tilt, to tilt red, which is not good for the Republicans, that this once likely seat is now becoming more and more competitive for them. I'm not saying this is the case now. I'm just saying that this is the case if this all... Um, becomes much more prominent, and if this all mo maintains this momentum, which is somewhat unlikely, but not entirely unlikely. I mean, once we're getting this close to the midterms, anything can happen, and it's becoming more and more of a factor um, as we get closer. Uh, we can see uh, Florida becoming tilt blue, as we're seeing with the polls. Uh, that would put the Democrats effectively um, in control of the Senate. Same with North Dakota, we can see that having an effect there. No polls have come out there yet, but I'm just speculating. Uh, we can see states like Nevada uh, becoming likely, likely blue. We can see states like uh, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, that special dish, that special race in Minnesota, all becoming solid blue. Overall, I'd say that um, I'd say that Texas is unlikely to go any, go from anything from a lean, even with this breakthrough. Indiana is somewhat unlikely, but we keep that as a tilt, um, a tilt blue. Uh, for now, Florida will remain tilt red. For, for now, North Dakota will remain tilt red, and Nevada will remain tilt blue. But we're seeing more and more pathways open up for the Democrats to take control of not just 
the House of Representatives, which they were already strongly favored to win before this came through and all, and before uh, these polls came, which show them very uh, in very strong in a very strong lead. But we're seeing a lot more pathways for Democrats to take the House. We're seeing a lot more pathways for Democrats to, to take the Senate. I still believe that the Republicans will hold the Senate. I still believe that this 50-50 margin is what will occur in the Senate. But I believe that um, there's a number of co- there's a number of more combinations that the Democrats can have in order to win the Senate with this breaking through. This is definitely be- uh, very beneficial for the Democrats in the Senate, and especially beneficial for the House of Representatives. Because, as I said in my um, my House of Representatives prediction, which was from like about a month ago, if you guys checked it out, um, I predicted then the Democrats would take the House, but by a very small margin with a very small hold. But this is good. This is especially be- good for them in the in the House, arguably more so than the Senate, because if they can take this, the House with an even larger with an even larger lead, like this doesn't this doesn't change the fact that the Democrats will take the House because I do believe they will. But this will change how many seats they take, which is everything. I think that if they take, um, I think that if they take thirty seats, they'll barely hold a majority. Um, actually, if they take twenty seats. If they take 20 seats, they'll barely hold a majority. If they take 30, that's good for them. If they take 40, then um, that's that's as much as they need in order to um, actually get things done, in order to um, investigate the president, in order to even even go through impeachment uh, proceedings. That's the kind of majority that they need. And they'll need to take back somewhere between 30 and 40 seats in order for those things uh, to become a reality for them. And those things are becoming closer and closer as a result of these polls and as a result of these um, polls, especially with Donald Trump, as we're seeing now, which plays a very big role in the Senate and the House. All right, so overall, um, Democrats n- are now very much in the lead, both in the Senate, well, not in the Senate. The Senate is still a bit of a wild card. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for some of those polls to come out. But they're very much in the lead in the House, as we're seeing now with the congressional polling, and they now have a larger chance to take the Senate. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I've not been posting a lot more inconsistently lately, and that's because school has just started th- a few days ago. I've been trying to uh, just keep up with everything, and it's been kind of difficult, but I'm going to try to maintain a regular schedule of maybe a video every other day. Uh, hopefully I can keep that, but I do have a lot of big projects in, in mind for this uh, channel, that which I'm already working on now, and which I'm going to hopefully announce some of them today or tomorrow. I've been meaning to for a long time, but uh, hopefully it'll be today or tomorrow when I can uh, announce them to you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you liked it, leave a like, share, comment, subscribe. It's, only for, it's the only way for small channels like mine to grow. And I hope you guys have a good day. See ya.